Hi guys, my name is Venus Flores, fitness professional and health coach. Welcome to Wellness Diary channel and welcome to all of my new subscribers. You guys are awesome. All right, so I'm super excited that you guys are here because on this channel, we get to talk about fitness, we get to talk about mindset, we get to talk about nutrition, overall health, everything you need to know in order to become a happier, healthier you. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how your food affects your mood and some eating tips to improve your mood. To understand how food affects our mood, we have to have a basic understanding of how our nervous system works, okay? So now within our nervous system, we have neurons, which I'm sure you've heard of before, right? Well, they are the smallest functioning unit of our nervous system, and they all talk to one another to, um, uh, by relaying electrical messages back and forth within the brain, right? So our neurons, they don't touch each other. How are they relaying messages if they don't touch each other? Well, I'm glad you asked, right? At the end of each nerve cell, we have these chemicals called neurotransmitters, right? So think of these guys like little carriers, right? Because their job is to carry the message from one nerve cell to the next, right? It's like a domino effect. So one receive the message, they bump into the next, and then the next receive the message, bump into the next, and so on, just like dominoes, right? Some examples of neurotransmitters and their effect on our appetites. Now we have oxytocin, which is found in the brain. It reduces salt cravings and reduce appetite. We also have insulin, um, which is found in the pancreas. It increases food intake. Then we have leptin, which is found in the fat tissues. It reduces food intakes. And we have many more. It will be way too much to try to list them. All, okay so now our neurotransmitters are composed of either amino acid which is another word for building blocks of protein that we typically obtain from our diet and also they are also made of um, a fat like substance called choline which we also obtain from our diet so what does that mean if you consume too little of one or more of these dietary building blocks your body limits production of the neurotransmitters depending um, on their availability. So what does that mean again? Once a message comes down from a nerve cell and there isn't enough of the correct neurotransmitters to carry that message from one to the next, now that message stops, okay? And the thing is that disruption can have a profound effect on one or more of your physical emotional and mental processes which lead to a change in your mood appetite and thinking all right another thing to take a great note of is our vitamins and minerals especially vitamin b vitamin c vitamin e as well as iron selenium and magnesium right they all play an important part in our neurotransmitters because they are assembly line workers in manufacturing our neurotransmitters okay so for example if you take iron iron aid and neurotransmitters activities whereas if you take vitamin e vitamin e protects um, neurotransmitters from damages so we definitely need that in our diet now if your diet is full of empty calories and does not supply enough of these helpers neurotransmitters are not made or stored in sufficient amounts which will set you up for mood swings food cravings um poor sleeping habit and other emotional problems okay so by if you uh, take the time and correct these deficiencies your mood you'll, you'll definitely notice that your mood and thinking will improve okay the goal is to always aim for a well-balanced diet a diet that will make you feel good and keep your mind at ease give you all the energy throughout the day and overall it will feel good a diet that doesn't exclude a lot of our major macros as well as 
um, that will provide enough micronutrient for kind of replenish our vitamins bank and overall healthy neurotransmitters, right? So here are some tips to consider if you're trying to eat clean and making sure that you are getting those vitamins that we previously discussed, right? One, try to eat at least two servings of fruit daily. And one of these servings needs to be high in vitamin C. Now, number two, you should try to eat at least two servings of vegetables and beans, okay, daily. Two servings of these vegetables should be dark green or orange because, or orange vegetable. Dark green vegetables are high in vitamin E and orange colored vegetables are high in beta carotene, which is another word for vitamin A and are also rich in folate, which is a B vitamins. Now beans are very rich source of fibers and as well as vitamin B. Next, drink plenty of water daily, okay? Now, if you're someone who don't like to drink water, start by drinking one fourth of your body, um, of your body weight daily, okay? Please. Um, and you can gradually increase your intake to half of your body weight daily, okay? Because water, it is so essential for all body processes, right? Because it helps in regulate body temperature, it nourishes all cells and tissues it helps transport nutrients like oxygen to our tissues and it also helps maintain proper acidity level in uh, our body which in turn helps stabilize the nerves and tissues okay now chronic low-grade dehydration that results from drinking a little but not enough water is one of the most common cause of fatigue, right? The goal is to help you feel good, have a lot of energy, so drink plenty of water, all right? Next, let's talk about caffeine, right? You should definitely limit your caffeine intake to one or two cups daily, and that is enough to boost your energy and your mood, okay? But if you go beyond that, especially in people who are unknowingly sensitive to caffeine, can fuel the fatigue spiral. Again, the goal is to stay energized and improve the, your mood, right? Next is to eat breakfast, okay? Eating breakfast gives you energy and sets the tone for the day. During sleep, more than half of your glucose uh, reserve are drained by the morning. So when you wake up, the body releases the neurotransmitter called NPY, which makes you crave carbohydrate in order to replenish your um, your glucose bank, okay? So if you're someone who's already under a lot of stress, your stress hormones um, called norepinephrine or corticosterone are high. And these two hormones have a major effect on your NPY level because what they do, they boost that level up, right? So when they boost that level up, what happened? That increase um, your food cravings. And on top of that, it tend, makes you tend to overeat. And if you overeat, guess what? Weight gains happen. So please eat breakfast. Okay. Next is to choose a uh, nutritious fatty foods such as avocados, nuts, seeds, because they are a rich source of vitamin E. And we already covered how much vitamin E is very important in preventing um, damages in our neurotransmitters, okay? Now, another thing to cover is to listen to your cravings, okay? Because they are telling you something, all right? So in many cases, um, when you crave sweets, it's an unconscious effort um, for you to raise your serotonin level, which is another neurotransmitters, or your NPY level, okay? And a desire for creamy or fatty foods, such as ice cream, might be a basic need to satisfy the neuropeptide gelatin, right? So these appetite control chemicals are very powerful. So just trying to use willpower, right, <laughs> to make them go away, it's like giving up breathing, all right? So it is best to work with them, right? Very important, it'll save you a lot of headache, okay? So you crave something sweet, turn to a fig bar or uh, I don't know, like graham crackers with peanut butter, right? And if chocolate is your weakness, right? So indulge in like three chocolate, like uh, uh, Hershey's Kisses, right? And note 
that I'm not talking about eating the entire bags, okay? Just three pieces, right? And it's very important to try to limit your sweet intake to just two servings daily, all right? Lastly is to take supplements. Now, some people may not agree with me on that one, but um, it has been shown that even the best diet is likely to fall short on one or more nutrients when your daily energy intake is less than 2,500 calories, right? So some nutrients such as vitamin E are needed in uh, like a major amount. So amount that are too large to obtain from your diet alone. So if you're someone who falls below 2,500 calories per day, it's not a bad idea to consider supplementing um, with some vitamins, right? Note, uh, don't just buy any supplements because there are a lot of fluff out there in that, in that industry, right? So make sure that you do your research, you pick the right supplement and that you're only taking in stuff that you need. Okay. On that note, that was all for me guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helped. Now, um, also you can comment, comment. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if I need to clarify anything, comment below. Um, and also if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscription button as well as the notification bell so that you know when I put out new content like this one. Now, do me a favor, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.